In this problem, we want to quantify the shear force that is exerting on the board due to the development of the boundary layer um, up, upon it as the car is moving. And uh, in this particular video, we're interested in the shear force on the laminar part of the board, and in the next video, we'll tackle the shear force on the turbulent part of the boundary layer. So uh, what is happening here? We have, a, we have a boundary layer that's building up on the board. And uh, we calculated before that the transition point was approximately 60 centimeters downstream of the leading edge, which means that this zone here, uh, approximately, that I'm highlighting now on the, on the board here, this zone here is the zone where we have a laminar boundary layer and we have a force that's exerting on the board due to the friction of the air, which we can represent maybe something like this, um, something like this here. This would be F tau, tau for shear, and in the laminar part. And this is what we try to quantify. Okay, so where do we start with this? We start with the formula sheet, which gives us all the main models that we have available for different boundary layers. And in this case, we're in the laminar boundary layer. So we go back to the formula sheet and we see that we have a expression for CF, the friction factor. And this friction factor, says the formula sheet, happens to be 0 0.664 divided by the square root of the Reynolds number to the power of 1 half. So square root of the power of the Reynolds number. I don't remember this by heart. I just do that right now because I uh, did the exercise just a few minutes ago. Uh, but every time I choose to look it up rather than just to learn it uh, by heart. What is the friction factor? Well, the friction factor is by definition, so nothing to argue here. This is not a physical law. This is just a definition. It happens to be a non-dimensional version of the shear, tau, in which we're interested. And tau is non-dimensionalized by comparing it to one half of rho u squared, like so. So if you combine those two things, you can isolate tau, which is what we're interested in, the shear. And then we're going to integrate the shear over the surface. So let's take a look at the shear. Uh, we have here uh, tau. If we isolate tau from those two equations, we get tau is uh, one half of rho u squared multiplied by uh, this guy here, 0 0.664 multiplied by the Reynolds number. And this happens to be the Reynolds number based on distance, Rex. Uh, to the power minus one half, like this. And so if we expand this uh, down there below, we get uh, one half of rho u squared multiplied by 0 0.664 multiplied by, the Reynolds number is rho u x, the distance, um, and this is to the power minus one half. And then we have to divide this by mu. So we have mu, which is to the power one half over here. And if we expand this further, Try to group it together. We have one half of 0 0.664, which happens to be 0 0.332. This is my level of um, calculation. <laughs> yeah, multiplied by, now we have to be a bit careful. Uh, rho appears one times here and one time here to the power of minus one half. So when we write rho, uh, we have rho to the power of one minus one half, uh, which is one half. So we have rho to the power of zero, no, no, no. Rho, rho to the power 0 0.5 here. Uh, then we have u, the velocity, the mainstream velocity, which is appears to the square here. So u to the power 2, and then u to the power minus 1 half here. So we have uh, here u to the power 2 minus 1 half, which happens to be 1 and a half. 1 comma 5, like this. I'm not writing very comfortably on this board. 1.5. Um, and then we have mm, 0 0.664 is taken care of. We have the distance, which is interesting, but I'll keep it for the end. We have mu to the power of 0 0.5. And then we have the distance x to the power of minus 1 over 2. So let's group this together. We have 0 0.332 times, I'm going to group rho and mu together, density and viscosity, rho and mu here to the power of 0 0.5 multiplied by u to the power of one and a half, uh, multiplied by x to the power minus one half. Now this is the shear. This is the shear all along uh, the laminar boundary layer. And we can see that the shear is not one value. It is a different value depending on where you are on the board. And uh, this function here is quite interesting. It's to the power of minus something. So that if you draw the boundary layer, uh, let's uh, have a quick diagram. 
for just a second. If you draw the boundary layer like so, um, let's draw it on top of it like this, and we have this laminar part of the boundary layer which starts at zero and then grows and grows and grows and then it transits. We're interested in this zone here. Um, if you look at the shear tau, okay, um, tau is very high when x is zero and it will decrease progressively as x increases. So you have lots of shear on the leading edge, very close to the start. And this is where you have the maximum gradient of velocity. And then as you go down, uh, the shear decreases and decreases progressively. So what do we do with all those values of shear? Uh, we integrate, of course, we add up all the values uh, one after the other. And what I'm gonna say is that tau, mm, wrong color, like so, tau, uh, the force, the force, F tau, so the net force due to shear uh, in the laminar boundary layer. I'm going to say it is the sum of all the tiny shears tau multiplied by all the tiny areas ds okay, over the whole area. And in particular, I'm going to split the area into two parts. Um, I'm going to look at the board. Let's have a quick diagram again. Uh, I'm going to look at the board now in perspective, uh, something that looks like this. No, this is not very well drawn. Like, Let me try again. This is why it's not a very good job. But drawing on a digital tablet is a little bit harder than uh, on paper. So we have the board like this, and the velocity incoming is like so. Um, and what I'm going to take now is we have the coordinates x, which goes along with the flow, with the board. So no, I guess for you, it goes in uh, this direction, like so. Uh, this is x. And then I'm going to take a piece of a strip of, of, of board right, that goes like this. And this strip of board here has a width here, dx, and um, a length that is called uh, w, which is this, this length here. Or if you want the width would be w and then the length would be dx. So that I write uh, this integral here as the integral of tau w, which is the width of the board, which remains constant along with the flow, uh, times dx here. And so more precisely, I'm going to write this from x is equal to zero, which is where I start uh, the boundary layer, the laminar boundary layer. And I go in the laminar boundary layer right up until the transition point. And this transition point here happens to be, we said before, at approximately 0 0.6 meters. So I go up to x is equal to x transition. And I integrate then tau, the shear, multiplied by the width of the board. I think it's one and a half meters in this exercise. And then uh, dx, which is here. So let's now put tau, the shear, from the equation above here, uh, inside this equation, and we have here, from zero to x transition, of tau happens to be um, 0 0.332 times rho mu to the power 0 0.5 times u to the power one and a half times x to the power minus 0 0.5, yes? And then I have w, which is here, w, and then I have dx. This is not a very difficult integral. It's a bit intimidating at first, but when you realize that we're carrying this out with respect to x, uh, you see that there's only one parameter in there that depends on x, and that's x itself. All the rest will get out of the integral. So even before I begin doing it, I put out all the terms that do not depend on x. And this would be 0 0.332 multiplied by rho mu to the power 0 0.5. Let me remove the multiply. Oop. Let me remove the multiply sign uh, just for now, like so. Multiply by u one and a half to the power one and a half. Um, multiply by w, and then I carry out the integration of x to the power minus 0 0.5 dx. And this happens to be one over minus 0 0.5 plus one of x to the power minus 0 0.5 plus one. It's a trick uh, that I like to play. I like to not try to remember which one is the square root and which one is one over the square root of those of those terms. I just take the power here and you put it uh, below the fraction, you add one. Um, and it works all the time except for minus one. Um, 
but uh, this is it and you um, evaluate this between x transition and zero over here and so we get this one over uh, 0 0.5 this is 2 and so the 2 will get out of the brackets and will be multiplied by this so we get back again 0 0.664 multiplied by rho mu to the power 0 0.5 multiplied by u to the power one and a half multiplied by w uh, multiplied by x to the power uh, 0 0.5 to the power 0 0.5 and this is evaluated between 0 and x transition so it's just x transition here this is uh, the force due to shear, tau, in the laminar part of the boundary layer. It's a very useful expression because now we, all we have to do is put in the, the particular values for this problem and we're going to get the shear in the laminar part. Um, and so putting in the numbers in there, we have uh, 0 0.664 multiplied by density will be 1.225 kilograms per meter cube. Uh, viscosity is a very small number, 1.5 times 10 to the power minus 5 pascal seconds. This is to the power 0 0.5. Then I multiply this by uh, the velocity, which is, I forgot, I think 10 meters per second. 10 meters per second to the power 1.5. Uh, multiply by the width of the board. So this is coming back to the original diagram. Um, this is W, the width here, which happens to be the height of the board on this diagram over there. And so this is one and a half meters um, in this case. And then the position um, at which the boundary layer transits happens to be, we calculated it before, 0 0.612. Although I wouldn't be too confident about the last digits, but let's say 0 0.612. And this is to the power of 0 0.5 over here. And so now, uh, if you put this into your calculator, you get 0 0.203, yes? And this is a force that we calculated, F tau, the laminar part. And so this is Newton at the end. And so I square this up like so. Okay, so... Um, it's a very small number, okay? 0 0.2 Newton is oof, um, not even the weight of a pen. Um, so a very, very small number. Uh, the friction on this board is not very high because the car is not going very fast. We're only moving at 10 meters per second, which is 36 kilometers per hour. So the, the velocity of a fast bicycle, as you can see. Um, but then to this, we're going to have to add the friction in uh, the turbulent part of the boundary layer, and this will add up to that. Okay, so this is how you calculate the force due to shear on the laminar part of a boundary layer. In the next video, we'll tackle the turbulent part.